saying hi. Right. Okay. I want to be able to hear. Well, yeah, but that's that's not what it says. That's what I want to be. Yes. So just Your another view. reminder, yes. just Maybe making everybody. sure you're somebody. Talk, so. All right. Muted. Oh, mute it. Mute it, please. Yes. Yeah. They're saying mute it, please. So let me introduce Kathy. I met Kathy like three years ago, I guess, in Pittsburgh. And lo and behold, about two and a half years ago, she and her husband sold their home and they packed their belongings in an RV and they have been on the road, okay? And in the meantime, she also published a new cookbook which is very exciting and I'm sure she'll talk about it. And I put the cookbook is called 10 minute whole food plant-based cookbook. And I put the link in, in the chat room here. So I'm delighted to have Kathy. She is now in Tucson and she was worried that her air, it's so hot there she had to keep the air conditioning on. So as we have a little snow here in Pittsburgh, think about that, okay? <laughs> So, Kathy, I'll hand it over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sally. You guys, I am so excited to be here. What you can expect tonight is lots of interaction. I love to connect with you in the chat. I appreciate those interactions. So do drop your questions and comments in the chat. I see some familiar faces out there in the gallery. So I don't um, watch the speaker view. I look at all of you. So I love the connection. I will often ask for you to type a yes or a smiley face to know how to get into the chat. Also, if you are on, if your audio is not muted, um, it looks like it's the person using the phone. There is a mute button, or if you're on your phone, if you can just tap the mute on right on your handset. I am like one of those people that sees a squirrel and gets distracted. And so when I hear noises in the background, I think they're talking to me. So if you can mute, that would be awesome. Yeah, and I just went ahead and muted everybody. There were a couple perfect. people. Okay. So, and if for some reason you can't hear me, wave your arms like this so that I know that my audience is down. But let's start by, why don't you drop a hey in the chat and tell me what you had for dinner. And if you're not tuning in from Pittsburgh and you did not tell us where you are, go ahead and let us know where you're tuning in from. As Sally mentioned, I am coming to you live from Tucson, Arizona. We are literally parked just south of the Saguaro National Park. As a quick background, which Sally mentioned, I am a real person. I travel full time in a fifth wheel RV. This is my RV kitchen with my husband and our three cats. So if you hear noise in the background, I do apologize, but sometimes our cats get a little wild and chase each other around and there's only so much space. Our connection to Pittsburgh is pretty strong. We lived there for over seven years, got married there, adopted our plant-based lifestyle there, and we really do consider it home when people ask us where we're from, even though right now we're really from the road. So I wanted to talk about like traveling and real life situations that revolve around how to cook and stay plant-based on the road. So I'd love to answer your questions. If you have an upcoming trip planned and I don't talk about that scenario, drop it in the chat. Let me know. I'm happy to give you ideas. We have been vegan for over seven years and whole food plant-based for the last year and a half. So we've experienced pretty much every situation you can imagine, including rerouting our trip to travel an extra three hours to miss a hurricane. So we've, we've experienced it, we had to plan for it, and we did it all while eating plant-based. But before I get started, let me introduce myself. I am Kathy Davis. I am a plant-based lifestyle and accountability coach, the author of the 30-minute whole food plant-based cookbook, and the CEO of Veg Inspired. I help people every day transition to a plant-based lifestyle and make it their normal way of life without requiring hours in the kitchen or the stress of what I'm going to eat. I've been eating and creating vegan meals and sharing them on my blog for over seven years. And I tweaked my own habits to follow that whole food plant-based way of eating a year and a half ago to increase my energy, level up my health and shed extra weight. And I just crossed over the 40 pound mark, which is so exciting. So first things first, I wanna share with you that traveling plant-based 
doesn't have to be hard. When you plan ahead and do a little bit of prep work, it really can be easy and just a normal way of life. And I do see some familiar faces that are part of my group that came and are supporting me. And I love that you are here. So if you've heard me speak, you know that my number one tip for success is to plan. There are hundreds of places that you can get recipes, you know what to eat, but really if you don't plan ahead, you are setting yourself up to fail. So I wanna talk through a couple of scenarios that you may encounter when traveling and share a couple of easy meals from my new cookbook that you can make ahead or have ready when you're traveling. So I'm going to talk through four scenarios, but again, I'd love to hear you you know, if you've got certain things that you're encountering or situations you want me to talk through, I'm happy to do that. Um, I want to talk about the dream situation, which is you travel to an accommodation with understanding people in a full kitchen, access to a full kitchen. Another situation you may encounter is that you're cooler only traveling. So you're road tripping, you're camping, you're boating, you're hiking all day, right? I also want to talk through travel days. What do travel days look like for us? And then what do those long driving days look like for you plant-based? And then the fourth situation, which is always one that I get a lot of questions on, is what do I do when I travel to an accommodation or with people who may not understand my way of eating and kitchen access or kitchen access may be questionable or out of the question completely. So let's get the dream situation out of the way because when you travel and you have people that are understanding, oftentimes they'll help make food for you. And it's really just clarifying what, what your way of eating looks like. So if you are vegan, it can be easy to say, I'm vegan, I don't eat anything from an animal. But if you're whole food, plant-based, SOS free, right? Trying to explain to somebody who's never cooked oil-free food can be, a, can be a challenge. So I always recommend Again, having that conversation ahead of time, planning ahead, right? How can you help support your hostesses and hostess to really make sure that they feel comfortable in the kitchen and they, they feel comfortable serving you? So I've had the dream situation. We have a friend, we have a couple friends that travel and we'll meet occasionally throughout the years we've been traveling and they understand vegan. They understand that we're oil-free. They're huge supporters of my cookbook. They cook with oil-free meals. It was, they love it. They think it's great when we're around, when we're around each other, they eat oil-free, you know, or we'll go out and they'll choose a vegan option. So it really is about, you know, really having those conversations. In those instances, here's some tips. So if you have a pen and paper, this is a great time to start taking notes if you haven't been already. But if you're driving and you can bring your instant pot or your rice cooker, right? Or if you're driving and you're going a long way, right? So you don't want to pack like an entire box of, you know, every ingredient you're going to need for the meals that you planned ahead, because remember my number one tip is to plan, bring those small ingredients or those exclusive ingredients only sold in your area, right? If you have a favorite hot sauce or, you know, or you make your own, maybe bring those exclusive ingredients that you can't pick up at a grocery store. And then the recipes that I'm going to show you, you could easily pick up at a grocery store, right? So it's not as if you aren't eating normal foods. And I say that because we travel to some pretty crazy places. I was telling Sally before, um, we stayed in Alpine, Texas. It is about two hours north of the Mexican border and about two hours from any major city. And I don't even think there was a whole food within two hours. So we were shopping at these tiny little grocery stores and they had beans and rice and all of those whole food ingredients that I normally use. So I didn't really miss much, but I plan ahead to when I know we're going to those places to make sure that I have my favorite tahini that I know that I can get at a budget friendly price, or I'll make sure that we have, you know, our woven wheat crackers from Whole Foods in stock somewhere. So if there's specialty ingredients that you can only get in your location, bring them with you. Now, if you're flying, that is a little bit more challenging, but if you're flying and renting a car, traveling for a long time, you can really, um, like I said, plan ahead and swing by that Whole Foods and grab a few ingredients that you want and then either leave them there or donate them or, you know, if you can buy in bulk, if the bulk sections are open, you can only buy what you need while, you're, while you'll be there. So that's really my tips for that dream situation where 
the people are understanding. They either eat like you or they're totally willing to cook like you. You plan ahead. You've had your conversation. Everybody's on the same page. Some really easy meals to suggest are things like pasta, you know, whole grain pasta in your favorite sauce. You can either make it or bring it. Um, cooking with the hosts and hostesses really help to, um, you know, further their education on the way you eat. Baked potato bars are fun. Taco bars are fun. Um, so I do, did tell Celia ahead of time that I was going to share a bunch of recipe ideas and links. Um, I'll be spouting them off. So I have them all in an email that I will send to her and she'll send that out to you tomorrow. But if I say something like my taco filling and I'm not on there, feel free to send you know, reply to Sally or shoot me a message on Instagram or something and I can get you those recipes. So that's the dream situation. Now, the dream life of traveling, right? So now you're road tripping, we're moving into number two, you only have access to a cooler or maybe you're at a hotel and only have access to a fridge. Maybe there isn't a little kitchenette or you couldn't get an Airbnb where you had your own kitchen. And so you're only living out of a cooler or maybe it's a mini fridge. So what are some things you can do? So again, you're not gonna get out of this without me telling you to plan ahead because that is my number one tip. But really plan ahead and then really think about what you can prep ahead of time and how you can store those ingredients in your cooler so you can toss together some really easy meals. So what I wanted to put together to you with you today is my raw vegetable hummus wraps from the 30 minute whole food plant-based cookbook. Now we eat these on whole grain Ezekiel tortillas. We'll eat them on, this time I have it on a whole grain Ezekiel pita. And it's super easy and everything can be prepped ahead of time. So I'm gonna just show you one serving, but you can, you know, increase it by however many wraps you're make, making. Now these wraps can be made ahead of time and then packed in the cooler, or you can pack all of your ingredients in the cooler. So what we're going to do is I warm my tortilla ahead of time. It's a little cold, so it's gonna be interesting. Um, we're gonna spread a fourth of a cup of oil-free hummus on the tortilla. Just do that real quick with a spoon. It's super easy. The other thing you can do if you're following Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen and you really wanna get in some of those spices he talked about, this is a really great time to sprinkle on, on turmeric or the black cumin or another spice, maybe to add a little flavor to your, you know, your hummus, because it's just a plain um, oil-free hummus or um, some other flavors that you want. Next, we are going to add a little handful of our fresh greens. You can use either mixed greens, spinach, you can use massage kale. In the recipe, it calls for spinach or baby mixed greens, but you can vary it up. Next, we're going to do, so typically we will shred and grate or grate our carrots and our beets. I hope you can see that. So this is a raw beet, raw carrots. We grate them on the small side of the box grater. And so to our tortilla, we're gonna add a few tablespoons of these colorful veggies. And you'll see why I call it my rainbow wrap because it has all the fun veggies. Now, of course you could add tomatoes or you could do avocado, but for this, we were really going for kind of a low fat, lower fat option. Um, and the tahini, the hummus has a little tahini. So then we're gonna put in some red bell pepper. And then I love, we love broccoli sprouts. We'll put in about a tablespoon of sprouts. And then I would wrap this up and eat it. Now, again, you could easily wrap this ahead of time wrap this ahead of time and store it in the cooler, or you could store everything as I had it here and then just make it at a road stop, you know, at a truck stop or a rest area and have a little picnic. Um, this is something that you could do while camping. You know, if you're, if you're out camping, you just need a really fresh meal. So this would be one of the things that I would recommend. It's our raw vegetable hummus wrap. And if you do want a tangy boost, that is one of the variation tips. You can drizzle it with your favorite vinegar to really like give it a pop of, of flavor. You could also do lime juice 
or lemon juice or any of that, you know, citrusy or acidic um, topping. So that's easy. I'm pretty sure I was able to whip it up in about five minutes since all of my veggies were prepped. Now, this is like a bonus tip, right? All of those prepped veggies could also be used for salads throughout the week, salads throughout the weekend. You could mix them. You could do the whole thing and eat it on a quinoa bowl. So it really could be, you know, you could have these prepped and use them throughout the week or and use them for different meals when you're traveling. So that, that. And then some other ideas of meals that you can prep ahead. Um, there are, there is a recipe for black bean burgers. They can actually be cooked and reheated over a fire. So if you have coals on a campfire and you have one of those grates, you can set them on there to reheat. You can set them on a grill to reheat. I like to cook them at home and then prep them easily outside. So typically what happens is we will have people come and camp near us and sometimes they're, they're plant-based and sometimes they're not. So a lot of times we'll prep our meals ahead of time, you know, the day before they arrive. And then we just throw together our burgers. When they're cooking theirs, we're cooking our burger outside and everything's ready to go. That way there's not, because we love to be outside with the people that we're camping with. And we have this beautiful kitchen, so we don't do a lot of the prep work outside. We, we bought the camper for the kitchen. So um, some other ideas. So carrot dogs, we actually did this a bunch of times this summer. We made the carrot dogs ahead of time. And then our, we have a recipe on our on veginslayer.com where you um, steam them and then marinate them in the marinade. And then we actually cooked them right over the the coals of the fire and it was awesome and they tasted so good they were like really really nice um like smoky carrot dog it was they were perfect so that link will come and then another really good tip is i have made a homemade granola bar recipe in the cookbook and i thought about making those today but there's already a video out of that so i'll send sally the link for that too because it didn't, I wanted to give you new recipes that you may not have, you wouldn't have seen. And, you know, I really think that this is, you know, these are some great recipes that you can make ahead. So the next one I want to show you for the make ahead days, and this actually falls both in this scenario and in the travel days, is our white bean bruschetta. So I went ahead and prepped some of the ingredients for this as well. So in here, and again, this is, this is the recipe. So I have two cups of diced tomatoes in this container and I have one can of drained and rinsed white beans. I like navy beans because they're small and they were drained and rinsed. Uh oh, this might be a too small of a bowl. Hmm. Let me get a big bowl. I'm notorious for this, a too small bowl. Does that happen to anybody else? Okay, so we had two cups of diced tomatoes and I use fresh grape tomatoes. And if that's a tip, I also have another bonus tip. I buy grape tomatoes instead of a whole tomato because um, I can easily measure them out and the rest of the tomato doesn't go to waste, right? It's hard to store that second, that other half of a tomato. So I buy the little pints of grape tomatoes and that works perfect. Um, next on the list is a half a cup of fresh basil chiffonade. So to chiffonade the basil, you just um, lay all the leaves out flat, roll them up, and then thinly slice them. Next is three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. And then I use uh, garlic powder because it's easier and faster. And I use a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. It also gives it a really good, like, sweet flavor. Um, you could put fresh garlic in there. Um, I just found it to be a little strong the last time. So I stick with the, with the garlic powder. I think I did the dishes and then you just stir it up. And I love to pair this with the woven wheat crackers from Whole Foods. Unfortunately, they are not salt free, but they are oil free. So um, we'll use the woven wheat crackers. I also like to make, I'll take the whole grain pitas from um, 
the Ezekiel whole grain pitas and I will bake them in the oven. The secret is to start them in a cold oven. Bring the oven to 350 degrees. This is a bonus recipe from the cookbook. And then once it gets to temperature, flip them over and bake them for an additional 10 to 15 minutes until they're the crisp tender that you want. First, cut them. Cut them into the triangles first or into whatever shape you want. And then you can bake them in the oven. So cold oven, bring them to temperature, flip them over, and then continue to bake them. And I do that with um, the pitas and tortillas. Now it's going to depend on the thickness of your tortilla, um, but it typically works very well in our oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and it's, they're usually ready in about 25 minutes because it takes about 10 minutes for it to get to temperature. But obviously you need to watch them because every oven's a little different. So then this is our bruschetta. Oops. So delicious, like I said, so, what I would do with this is I would have it in the fridge or in the cooler and I would, you know, if we're driving and we stop at a rest area, we can have a quick snack. You could make this, you could eat it out of lettuce cups. You could, you know, serve it as a snack to people, you know, that you're camping with. I mean, it really is a great, easy recipe and it has familiar ingredients, which is one of my recommendations when you're trying, when you're eating with other people, it, um, Serving them familiar ingredients makes it makes it so much better because there's no question of what's in something. So those that's what I would do. I would use this for make ahead with camping or those cooler cooler meals because it would stay pretty pretty good in the cooler with the balsamic vinegar. Or I would use it for um, driving travel days, which is my next topic. Um, and I do see some questions in the chat, so I want to pop these in. Thank you, Marsha. So yes, we will be driving. I think we, we are going to Yellowstone and up to Glacier. So that's really cool. We'll probably pass right near you. Oh, you guys had some yummy stuff for dinner too. I love the, I love the chat. Uh, let's see. So you put it in the cold oven because it helps to dehydrate it, helps to dehydrate the um, tortillas, the pitas faster. Yes. Oh, I'm glad, Ronnie, that I'm not the only one that has to get a second bowl because I, I uh, never have the big, the big enough bowl. I'm always like, yeah, that's going to work. And then I'm usually like smushing it down. Um, so it is better if it's some, uh, Eileen asked if it's better to let that sit. So it is better to let it sit, but you don't, you don't have to let it sit. Um, a lot of times we let things sit because of the, the salt pulls out the the salt pulls out the moisture, but since there's no salt salt in this, um, you don't really have to let it sit. The ones that sit in that balsamic vinegar mixture at the bottom, that's it's really good the second day. But you don't have to. You could you could serve it right now on crackers, and it's very delicious. And with the fresh basil, it like takes it over the edge. So easy meals for travel days. I talked about the granola bars. I'm gonna send a recipe for energy. Bites. They are made with pecans and dates and tahini. Um, some other things that we do is we will prep veggies that we can eat while while we're driving. Um, and usually it's something easy like carrots or celery, something easy like that that's you know not going to get everything all wet and messy. Um, fruit is a really good snack for travel days. Oat cookies. Um, you could even have potatoes ready to go for travel days. A lot of times we will have ingredients in the fridge that we can just stop at a rest area or I'll put them in a cooler if we're gonna drive straight through and take them in the truck with us. One of my favorite snacks is to make uh, cracker sandwiches with nacho no cheese. Yes, I'm a huge fan from Pittsburgh. So I love nacho no cheese. I know that Sally has, has had them on before. So that's fun. Or you can use, you can use Mary's or the woven wheat crackers from Whole Foods. So, there's lots of ideas and ways that you can have those meals ready for travel days. And again, this, this pita would be a perfect example of something you could have already made up in a cooler, ready to eat on those travel days. Um, and then I actually have, I was gonna talk four situations, but I actually have a fifth bonus tip um, on traveling. So we'll get to that situation in just a minute. So let's see, um, scenario number four is probably the most challenging, but 
a very easy one to overcome because you take the driver's seat. You take control of the situation. So this is, this is the scenario where you are traveling to an accommodation with people who may not be supportive or for people with, who don't understand your way of eating. So that's where kitchen access and meal access could be questionable. So I always recommend trying to have a conversation about the way you eat, but honestly, I don't know if anybody else has had this, but it's hard to explain to people why you don't eat oil if they believe in, you know, diets with oil or why you would not eat meat if they are keto or paleo. So when you have those kinds of situations, take control, right? Take control of the situation and bring yourself meals that are hearty enough to make. Now, if you're flying, that can be a little bit more challenging, right? Because you don't have necessarily have kitchen access. If you're flying, you don't have you know room to pack all of your favorite things. You obviously don't want to go out to the store and buy all of these spices and herbs and things they may not have. So plan ahead and really think about what you need. Can you pack all of the spices in, um, you know, can you pack all of the spices in a little Ziploc baggie and stick them in your soup? Or in a little way, can you make ahead a salt-free blend or taco seasoning, and then you know season up some lentils? Can you make everything for the farro salad? So I'm going to mention the farro salad in the 30-minute whole food plant-based cookbook as one option. Um, and it uh, aquafaba based uh, an Italian-style dressing. So we would want to prep everything for that dressing, except maybe the vinegars and then the aquafaba. Kathy? Kathy, are you still there? Whoops. <laughs> I guess. I'm here. Okay. Yeah, we're getting, you just let, we get a notation your bandwidth is low and you just, you're in and out. Here now. Can you hear me now? I feel like I'm a commercial. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, your bandwidth is still you low, but but um nope, you're out. You're gone. Let's see. Am I here now? Now you're Aww. now you are here. Yeah, let me turn my video off for just a second. Okay. And let's see if it resets the Wi-Fi. Okay. So, but so I'm gonna keep talking though because I want to respect everybody's time. Sure. Um, and I know yes. that, um, you know, if you have questions, feel free to drop those in the chat. So, prepping ahead for these off these uncomfortable or awkward type situations really is about taking control of the way that you eat and really, really, you know, showing people those familiar meals. So some things that we've done in the past when we traveled to homes that, you know, maybe didn't have plant-based options or weren't entirely sure, we prepped the farro salad from the cookbook. We prepped a rainbow quinoa salad, which I will send a link with Sally tomorrow. It's on the Veg Inspired website. We um, would pack our Greek pasta salad that uses an oil-free Greek salad dressing. So we would have all of these salads, these hearty meals that could travel easily available. In that situation, we might prep ahead veggie burgers and then it's a simple reheat. Or we might suggest baked potatoes and roasted veggies with, um, with the, you know, so we can eat with the hostesses and the hosts because you don't want it to be like, well, you eat your food and I'll eat my food. But at the same time, you have to come to an agreement about how you're going to navigate those situations. Um, so I really wanted to kind of give those ideas. Now, some of the fifth tip is really a bonus tip and it really is more about those times when you have no kitchen option, you might have a fridge or a cooler and you maybe didn't have time to plan ahead because life happens and sometimes you just, you just need a solution and you don't have one. 
And if you don't have a kitchen, you aren't running to the, to the Whole Foods to buy your favorite thing to heat, right? So what could you do? You can mix and match meals from restaurants, get some takeout, maybe get some baked potatoes from Wendy's that are completely plain with nothing on them. Go to Chipotle and get a salad. Now I'm speaking specifically for that whole food plant-based salt, oil, sugar free in this situation. So if you're going to Chipotle, unfortunately the rice does have oil in it. I did some more research today before prepping for this. So if you're going to Chipotle, maybe you get the salad, the beans, all the salsas. If you wanna eat the guac, go for it. If you don't, that's fine too. And then maybe you combine those, right? The baked potatoes from Wendy's and the salads from Chipotle. And I know you're going to two restaurants, but it's about what's, what's the grab and go option. And you make those into multiple meals, right? If you can go to a restaurant with a salad bar, which I know some of them aren't open right now due to everything that's going on, but Whole Foods salad bar or grocery store salad bars were really great because you could mix and match and make that meal stretch over a couple of days when you were in, in town. Um, and then get your takeout from those couple of restaurants and mix and match. Maybe see if there's a vegan restaurant in town that might have some raw food options. You know, maybe they have some raw food tacos that don't have oil in them that you can add to that baked potato or that you can add to steamed rice at, um, at the hostess's house. So really kind of thinking about what you are, you know, what you're doing as far as getting those options, making those options available to you when you're in a pinch. Let's see. Um, yeah, so whole, Chipotle's foods might be high in salt, so that may not be the best option. Um, that may not be the best option if you're salt free. I actually researched the oil and not the salt. The raw hummus wrap seems to have more filling than a wrap can hold. How do you manage to fold it? So yeah, I probably, I see that people are saying it'd probably be easier to do a taco. So it probably has too much in it for this little six inch tortilla. I think in the book we called for an eight inch tortilla instead of a six inch pita. So it appears as though I might look more like a taco um, or you can cut the pita in half and we could have filled each side of the pita since the Ezekiel ones fold apart. A good observation, Maya, camping at the end of the month, you're going to use the hummus wrap for the trip. That's awesome. So I can't, you know, I can't stress how important it really is to plan ahead when traveling. You know, we always have food prepped in the fridge for travel days. As I mentioned before, we've been in situations where we sat in traffic for two hours and, you know, we're not, we're not pulling into a restaurant, hauling a 35 foot fifth wheel. As I said, we have three cats. They can't be in the car for that kind of time for us to, you know, go and find somewhere to park. So, you know, it's really about being prepared for those items. We also had a situation where we drove past our destination three more hours so it was a six hour drive to avoid a hurricane that had turned um it would have gone right over our campground and we were like you know what we are able to drive let's just keep going so without planned meals and having these prepped ingredients that i typically keep in the refrigerator it would have been really easy to just cave and eat some convenience foods either from the local vegan place or restaurants or whatever so i'd love to hear if you have questions or comments about traveling. If you have scenarios that um, I didn't cover, let's, let's talk through some of those. Sheila, how about travel by airplane? So I, the thing about traveling by airplane is it really is about thinking through what meals you can make when you get there that require the least amount of ingredients to purchase. So if you're traveling to somebody's house, like back to the scenario where it's a dream place and they'll cook for you and you have kitchen access, or you're traveling to an Airbnb and you'll have a kitchen and you'll be there for a week, I always suggest planning ahead. Because like I said, if you can mix up, you know, if you could mix up the, you know, 
I don't know, if you could throw the garlic salt or garlic, not garlic salt, garlic powder in a little, well, that might not be what you want to put in a little Ziploc baggie, but to go through the airport. But, you know, if you had like a spice blend or something like that, that you could put into, you know, a little Tupperware, you can kind of get those ingredients prepped at home and then take them and then only buy what you need. Right. So if I was making this at an Airbnb, I would figure out, can I get a smaller container of balsamic vinegar? Can I mix? I don't know. Can you mix the balsamic vinegar and the garlic at home in a little container and then just buy the beans, the fresh basil and the fresh tomatoes at the Airbnb and chop them up there? You know, because that's the other situation is if you're traveling, you're not going to obviously bring your kitchen knife on the airplane, especially if you're, you know, only taking carry on. So you know, it's, it's about looking at what that scenario might be. So Sheila, if you have a specific, you know, I'm traveling to my family's house and I'll have access to kitchen, but I want to know how to plan because I'm not able to take my rice cooker and my box of my special ingredients, then what can you take that'll keep you satisfied and also allow you to really, you know, push through those days, but also enjoy the family time. Um, other questions. So hopefully that helped. I'm, I'm trying to think through like when I flew with an airplane, like I flew to my, see my brother, you know, a few years ago and we went to Whole Foods and I like planned out what I would eat. Like I brought, I actually brought Tupperware containers of my oatmeal, my flax and all of that prepped ahead of time. And then all I had to buy at the grocery store was a carton of almond milk to just mix in my oatmeal bowls. And, um, at the store I bought, crackers and veggies, which, which they would have eaten if I didn't eat them all. So it's kind of those types of, you know, those types of things that, that you can do that are familiar. Rinse the beans in a hotel room. Okay. So my tip on the beans, one, make sure you have a can opener. Now I'm, I'm a pretty, like, I like to have my beans rinsed because if not, I notice the effects, but I will just open the can dump it out and then fill the can with water and shake it and do that about five or six times. It's not perfect. They still do have a little bit of, you know, the residual bean juice, but it's better than having to bring your colander and wash that. So, and you could also, if they have a slotted spoon, depending on if, if it's a hotel, like with a kitchenette, um, you could do something like that. Banana, I always keep peanut butter, almond, butter with drizzle of honey in case I need it. Also carry green tea bags. Yes, I carry green tea bags too. I most definitely cannot stand when they don't have my green tea that I want. I drink it every morning for breakfast. So I always bring those with me. Let's see, plan because there's nothing we could eat on the plane, fruit wraps. Yes, yes, definitely. And there are, there are times when you really need to plan ahead on those flights because sometimes they don't have them. Joanna says, I have a little folding plastic calendar that I love for traveling, washing, and draining. That's a great idea. Yeah, and there are convenience items that you can buy. Since we have a really big kitchen and a lot of storage, our issue is not storage in the RV. It is weight. So we have some pretty, you know, gadgets that most people don't have. Like we have a full-size calendar and a small calendar. Like we have more kitchen gadgets than most people would have in an RV. Um, but we do a lot of... So other questions, other scenarios that you want to chat through, other, you know, navigating those social situations, what to say to family. Um, so I didn't make it on camera, but I do have an oil-free hummus recipe. There's one in the Whole Food Plant-Based Cookbook, and then there's also one on my YouTube channel. Um, and it's, I, it's pretty simple. It's the chickpeas and... I reserve the aquafaba. I usually make it from scratch with the um, with homemade chickpeas um, that I cook in my slow cooker. So I usually just use a little bit of that bean juice and then lemon, a little tahini, cumin, some garlic. Um, sometimes I put za'atar in there. So, you know, it's, it just depends. And then we also will buy, if we can find an oil-free hummus, we will buy an oil-free hummus. One of the big things that we noticed when we went whole food plant-based um, in December of 2019 is it really was the oil that helped to, or that was holding back 
back our, that really had stunted our weight loss. And so we're pretty strict on, you know, oil and eating foods that have oil. So we may not be as strict on the salt, but we're definitely more strict on the oil. Um, there is a black bean recipe in my cookbook. My biggest tip with the black bean recipe is to not over process it. It might look like it's not going to mush together, but don't over process the black beans. Otherwise it becomes black bean burgers just become so mush, they become so mushy. So just don't over process your black bean recipes. And a lot of recipes don't say that. And that's really one of the keys that I found when I was testing is that the more processing they got, the more mushy they got. Other things I can help with, other travel situations, questions about living in an RV, questions about finding foods as we travel the country. I'm trying to think of other things that people ask. We have a full, what looks like a full size refrigerator. It does run on propane though. It's an RV fridge too. Um, what other things might you want to know? Let's see, Tucson, have you found nice markets? So actually we've, we've looked for them, but we haven't really found anything that's been like consistently open the last couple of years. It's been a little bit of, you know, we, when we were in Fort Lauderdale, we could go to all the markets, get all the fresh veggies, but it's been, it's been a little bit more challenging. Um, here we've actually shopped at Fry's grocery store, which is a, must be a subsidiary of Kroger, which I'd never been to a Kroger. So that's was a, an adventure because it was a huge grocery store. And then we also hit up the local Whole Foods. It's the first time we've been to Whole Foods since November. So that was exciting. If you, if you go to Whole Foods all the time and then all of a sudden you don't, you're like, oh, I really kind of missed some of those foods. Uh, Laura, how long are you living in the RV? So we've been in the RV since 2019 as a choice to see the country. We were, you know, just felt like it was the right timing at the right time in our lives. So we, we had, at the time I had, I worked for another company, but now I work for myself. My husband has a full nine to five job based out of Pittsburgh. So we, you know, we, we work from the RV during the day and then we explore on the weekends. And our goal is to stay in all, all the, you know, continental states. And then we do want to go to Alaska with an RV and we want to see all the national parks. So far we've done, I think 16 states and 12 national parks. So we've got a long ways to go because I think they just added a 63rd national park to the list. So we have a long ways to go and we, we don't really have any intention of stopping. We absolutely love it. The cats have adjusted really well, as I mentioned early on. If you, if you, um, if you were, if you had, were here when I, I did my intro, I we travel with three cats, and they've adjusted well. We've adjusted to traveling with them, so it's it's definitely an experience. Um, we typically stay in one spot for about a month, maybe longer. We've been in Tucson for about six weeks, and we're here for another two weeks, and then we head to Sedona. It's been really warm here, but the nights in Northern Arizona have still been a little cold. And so we're just soaking in the heat out here and really enjoying it. And like I said, we're back to, up to some really cool bike trails in Tucson. So this is our first real, you know, experience with the, um, you know, biking in the desert and just the desert in general. We've never been this far West. So, and with the RV, so it's really cool. Um, Rochelle, yes. So I have a lifestyle coaching program. It's a group. It's a group. It's a group program, and um, it takes you from wherever you currently are to where you want to go. So it's 100% customized. It's not a cookie cutter approach, and it's not. Um, it's there's a combination of one on one and group coaching calls. So like last night I had a group coaching call, and then tomorrow I'm teaching a master class on meal planning. And then I also have open office hours for my clients tomorrow. And then, you know, I have some one-on-one -on -one scheduled for tomorrow as well. So I really take you from you. We really talk about your goal and what a fit it is. And I'm happy to, you know, send you some more information or hop on the phone with you and talk more about how, how it can help and if it would be a fit. Um, but it's really about, 
you know, your goals, accountability, and, and getting you to that point. Um, let me, would you please describe your typical weekly prep? How long and what would you also please estimate how much non-prep kitchen time you need? Okay, so let's start with my typical weekly prep. So my first prep, let's see, my first prep is my meal plan. And I know you can't see this and I, it's definitely not like for all the things, but I, we typically prep for two weeks at a time. So, or not prep, I'm sorry. We plan for two, two, two weeks at a time for our meals. So right now I have meals planned out through Saturday the 1st. We, so we grocery shop every other week and we still eat whole food plant-based and fresh ingredients. We just learned how to navigate the ingredients and best use them in their, their time frame. So like I knew when I was cooking, when I was making these recipes and how long the basil would last in the refrigerator or on the counter before I could, before it would go bad. I know how, you know, I store my, my mushrooms in a special way. I store my you know, the broccoli sprouts, I know I need to use them the first week, right? So I can't wait till the second week to use those. So I probably spend about an hour not in the kitchen planning my meals. And my plans have a couple of ideas for breakfast. Lately, it's been cereal or oats, um, or, you know, occasionally I'll cook up a tofu scramble or some kind of potato hash, but it's typically quick because we both work East Coast hours. Well, I, I own my own business, so I can work any hours. But my husband works East Coast hours, which means in Tucson, he's done it too. So at two o'clock, we're free and we can go bike in the desert or go to the campground pool or go for a walk. So I follow my, I follow the East Coast hours. So lately I've been eating something quick and easy because I'm up and working at 5 a.m. my time, which is 8 a.m. Eastern time. And so I probably spend about an hour. Um, we have our go-to favorites, and then I do a lot of go-to favorite recipes, and then I do a lot of leftovers. So like, for example, we made the burgers, some burgers from the Engine 2 cookbook last night, and they made eight burgers. So today we had left, leftover burgers for lunch. Tonight, one of us is gonna be lucky enough to eat this wrap, and then somebody else will have leftovers. We have some potatoes left over that we cooked up the other day. So I actually don't meal prep. Oftentimes I'll ingredient prep depending on what ingredients are coming down the line. Usually what I do, my ingredient prep is pretty simple. I'll say, okay, in the next five days, we're having rice two times, make a double batch of rice. In the next two days, we're going to have roasted veggies let's roast all the veggies right now because it's 80 degrees out, 90 degrees out, and I only want to turn the oven on in the RV as infrequently as possible. So that's how I prep. Um, like I planned in what we're going to do with the, with this bruschetta, right? So I now know that we have a bean-based snack that we can use. We can also use, wrap it in a tortilla and eat it. Um, it's really good on avocado toast as a topper. So there's some things that I've built into the plan, knowing what I was going to cook today for all of you. Um, so let's see. So typically, so my week, I like to cook. I always tell my clients, like one of the big things is I like to cook. So I don't want you to compare yourself to me. When we get done work at two, you know, we might hang out outside, go for a hike, go for a bike, run an errand. We've got three cats. Sometimes they want to go for a walk and look for lizards or whatever in the trees. They don't go very far. So we'll leash them and go outside and do whatever. And then around 4.30, 5 o'clock, we'll come into the kitchen and we like to cook together. So, you know, we might spend an hour dicing and chopping and prepping, but, you know, we prepped the ingredients for the, the wraps and it probably took about 20 minutes to really get everything washed, grated, and then prepped, but now it's done, right? So I've got those in there and they're prepped. So when I know ahead of time that I'm going to be eating things like that, then I might spend an hour to have those salad ingredients prepped or the wrap ingredients prepped because I use them interchangeably. Anything that's on this wrap, I would also eat as a salad. And I would just do, if I don't have hummus, I would just do rice, wine, vinegar, 
and or seasoned rice vinegar and tahini as my simple salad dressing. And then Eileen, let me know if that answered the first part of your question and then would estimate how much non prep that you, okay. So I will tell you that one of the things that I learned in the RV after um, being on the road for a little while is I didn't know how much I liked my dishwasher because we don't have a dishwasher in the RV. So I'm the dishwasher. So when I'm, you know, writing a cookbook with over a hundred recipes in a short amount of time in a small space with not very many prep bowls anymore. Like I used to have tons of prep bowls and lots of storage bowls and we've downsized. So I was constantly washing dishes. So I think I spend at least, at least 30 minutes a day just washing dishes and cleaning up the space because there's nothing worse than the kitchen being messy when you go to cook in it. So it's, I feel like because it's a small, you know, it's a small space, like this is the kitchen, but the desk is where the computer is and then there's a chair and you know, some other things. So it's like one space. So when it's messy, it's messy. Uh, Joanna, Sally dropped my website below. I plan my menu and then shop to support my menu generally once a week. Yeah, Marsha, so we, when we were in a, our, our sticks and bricks, we shopped once a week and then we, so right after we adopted a whole food plant-based way of eating to, you know, specifically to lose weight and really gain back some more energy and be able to prep for these long hikes that we're taking now, we, um, we decided on at the end of November, 2019, December 1st, we packed up the truck, left Daytona beach and headed all the way to Key West, which is like the place that you want to go for vacation and fun. And like vacations are all about like eating and eating out. And we're like, nope, we're eating whole food plant-based. So how are we going to do that? So we actually, that was the, one of the first times we did groceries for 14 days. And we noticed that we spent less because by the second week, you're like really making sure that you're using up the cabbage and the carrots and like the fresh veggies. And, you know, you're being a little bit more creative. Now we had a lot of recipes planned, but we also had some more, like, we'll just buy a couple extra packs of tofu or we'll buy a couple extra bags of frozen veggies in case we eat through all this food. Cause it was the first time. And we found that we really liked that it freed up a weekend because like I said, we travel, we're traveling full time. And really it's like, we work all week. So we want to be able to go out and explore on the weekend. So it really was about, you know, getting our time back and really allowing us to, um, you know, maximize the time that we're in some of these places. So it has been really great planning for a couple of weeks at a time. The longest we went was a month, which is insane to think that we did this, but it was right after they shut everything down um, for, for COVID. So it was April of 2020 and we went to Whole Foods in Gainesville and we were an hour from our campground. And so I was like, all right, we don't know what the situation looks like. So let's buy groceries for a month. And we're lucky we did because we traveled at the end of March to a campground in Tennessee where we actually stayed for six months because of just everything going on. It was easier to have a one place instead of traveling through all of the things that were happening last year. And I, we were in, we were in a new state, so we were quarantined for 14 days. So we literally ate the food from Florida up until like, and I remember those last few days, I'm like, I'm finishing the last of the berries. This is the last can of black beans. Like we've got to get to the grocery store, but it was so fun because we totally cleaned out our pantry. We were able to clean out the refrigerator, defrost the freezer. Like it was awesome. So if you haven't tried it and you are like a master meal planner, I do suggest trying two weeks and seeing if you can go. Um, but yeah, I love this. If you have a lot, as Marcia says, if you have a lot of snow, will not always shop. Cool. Well, this, we're at an hour or a little less than an hour. So I'm, I just appreciate Sally and Brittany and all of you in plant-based Pittsburgh team and all of you for tuning in just hanging out with me tonight. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed these recipes. Um, and I, I love, I'd love to connect with any of you that want to, um, you can find me. I have a Facebook group for my veg inspired foodies. 
Um, Sally can do the link. I think I can copy the link and put it in the chat if I can get this to open. Oh, it went to it. And I'll put it in the email tomorrow to everybody um, also, all the information. This has been so fascinating to me because it's so the antithesis of my lifestyle. It's just, wow. It's in there, wow. Yeah. Thank you. This is yeah, wonderful, it's, Kathy. It's fun. I really hope, like I said, I really hope that it was helpful. I'd love to be a resource as you continue on your, on your path to plant-based because isn't it all about the journey anyway? Like that's my motto. Right. It's all about the journey. It's all about the adventure. It is. It is. And you are figuratively and literally journeying <laughs> into your plant-based yes. experience. So, awesome. so well, thank you all thank so much. I appreciate you. Thank you, Sally, so much. And we will be in touch. Yes, we will. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I'll, I'll send you some comments also, Kathy, from the chat with people thanking you. You should, I'll make sure you get uh, this. Yeah, there's lots of people. I love that part. Yes. Thank you all so much. This is so fun. This is fun. Have a good dinner tonight. You have some beautiful Thanks. food there. Thanks. I'm really ready to dig into this bruschetta. The balsamic vinegar smells so good. Really? It's gorgeous. Yeah, it smells so good. So awesome. Uh, Joanna said, yes, I yes. Joanna, you will get the recording. Absolutely. Yes. Awesome. So I'm going to sign off and we will see you all next week. Bye everybody, have a good night.